Hello guys, what's up? I'm Suresh from the SketchUp Park Studio. Today we have a new tutorial about the Enscape 3.5 and it's about the Enscape lighting and Enscape interior rendering. So let's get to work. I have some previews of the project. So as you can see, this is the realistic render we took with the Enscape 3.5 and in different type of resolution, different type of lightings and some type of artistic and graphical renders like that. Very simple and easy, only with using some simple tips in Enscape interior rendering. So please subscribe our YouTube channel and support us. Let's get to work. I'm going to close it. It's not really important. So this is the 3D environment that we have in here. We only have this light and these two lights in here. As you can see, only we have three lights. But how we can improve our lighting in the Enscape interior? I have some preview of the Enscape environment in here. Very simple room, only with some small arrange of the textures. And we have some simple assets with the Enscape, as you can see. Curtain, people, furnitures, vegetation and textures. So, I use all of the textures with the displacement and it's really important tip for the realistic rendering. So, I'm going to close it in here. I'm going to click on the uh, Enscape Material Editor. I'm going to click on the Brick Worm. And I want to reduce my displacement some number about 1.06. And now it's much better. So let's get to the rendering. As you see, we have some dark environment in here. And it's the night render. So I'm going to start my lighting with the spotlight. But how? I'm going to click on the Enscape object in here and click on the spotlight in this place. I'm going to draw my spotlight very simple and easy. So now I'm going to close it. I'm going to click on one of these edges in here and turn it to this place. So, and another copy I need in the other side. So I'm going to move it to this side and move it in this place. So, now only I need to select one of them and change the uh, luminance power and beam angle of it. But I don't want to do this right now. So, for these floor lights, I'm going to use a sphere light. For this reason, I'm going to click on the Enscape object in here, click on the sphere light and double click on my screen. For changing the size of your light, you can reduce your luminous intensity with some number about 56 or some number about 36. It's really good number for it right now. Now I'm going to move it and adjust it in the right coordinate and place. So I'm going to move it in here. Click on the Enscape object. I must reduce the size a little bit. Maybe some number about 16 is good. So I'm going to move and adjust it on the blue axis and it's on the uh, position. For the next light, I'm going to do this work again. So after adjusting your lights into the floor lamp in here, now time for the adding some other sphere lights on the roof. For this reason, I want to have some light from the back side of my camera. So when I click on the scene number one, I can see the changes in here and my camera to the forward and I need some light from the backward. So I'm going to use the sphere light again. I'm going to save my file. I'm going to click on the Enscape object and the sphere light again, double click on it and change the intensity to the uh, 660 and now I'm going to move it a little bit to the wall and now everything is good. I need triple copies on the, uh, I think, green axis, 2x and I'm going to select all of them and take another copy on the red axis and now it's done for me so now I'm gonna click on the uh, scene number one in here 
and I am gonna start inscaping this place. So when you click on it, it depends on your system and depends on your hardware. After a second, you can see the uh, Enscape load for you. Some exporter is not really important at all. So you can click on the OK and check to continue your program. So it takes a little bit time because we add some lights and make your model a little bit heavy. So this is the environment that we have in here. Don't worry about the lighting. These type of lightings have some two reasons. Reason number one, we are on the medium quality rendering and if I increase it to the ultra, all of these darkness and shadow problems will be solved. And another related to the light setting. So I'm going to minimize my screen in here, click on the SketchUp, select one of these spotlights in here, click on the Enscape object and now I'm going to control my lights. Look at this place in here, when I reduce the spotlight, Actually, the intensity of the lighting will reduce and the size will get much smaller. So, the beam angle can be a little bit much narrow. So, I'm going to change this number to the 40 and the luminous intensity, some number about 278 is good. And now I only want to adjust my lights in my 3D environment. So I'm going to select this pass in here and move it to this place with some same number. So another time for this place, I'm going to do this job as the same. These type of adjustments takes a little bit time of your job. So be patient to reach to the best result of your job. So I'm going to deselect all of this. We have some sphere lights in here. I'm going to select one of them from these edge in here. And when I go a little bit forward, now I can click on the Enscape objects and increase the intensity. You can see the differences. This type of intensity, about 2000 candela, is not really realistic at all. So you must control it in some number about 56 to see the floor lamp glass. Or if you want to reduce it more, you can convert it to the 20. But 20 is a little bit too low for this type of environment. So I'm going to use 46 and it's done for me. If you see, it will go much bigger than your floor lamp. You can control it and it depends on you. I prefer to use some smaller number about 16 or some number about 12. Number is good, not important. So how we can improve this center lighting in here? So. When I click on the uh, 3D environment that I have, you can see we have some color lines in here. This is the simple material I add from the color name textures in the SketchUp. And now I have to use some techniques to convert them to the light, but I don't know how. When I click on it, I can see hidden light number 2 and it's only the RGB color code. But how I can activate it and convert it to the light? We have some option that called self illumination. When I click on the material editor, hidden light number one, look at this screen in here. When I change the type of it to the self illuminated, I will have some hidden lights in here and it's really wonderful. For the hidden light number two, I can do this job as the same and I convert it to the self illuminate. You can change the color texture to the white, for example, you will have some white color. Or you can change it to some color like the purple. You will have some purple light in here. I suggest to you to use some warm colors like the wheat in here and change the luminous color to the wheat too. Now we have some more alive render in here. You can increase the intensity, but I suggest to you to don't use some type of high level of intensities for the lighting. Some number about 4600 is good and I press enter. And for the hidden light number one, I'm going to do this job again. Some number about 4600 is good. But for this reason, I don't want to use the white color or warm color. So the normal color is good in here. Now I only want to adjust my backward lights. For this reason, I'm going to orbit in my SketchUp environment. Click on one of them. Click on the Enscape object. And if I increase the intensity, 
I will see the differences in here, but it's not realistic at all. So you must set it in some number about 700 candela. So everything is done about the lighting. Now time for the uh, rendering. I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna press F on my keyboard. I'm gonna click on the interior number one and I'm gonna close the view management. So now I'm gonna click on the save frame in here and now I'm gonna click on the visual setting. We have lots of work with the visual setting. For the first, I'm gonna use the field of view to check my camera. I want to see these sofas and furnitures holder in here. So I need some number about 56 and it's really good for me. So exposure is very important, but not now. I want to talk about it at the end of the tutorial. So I'm going to click on the image bar in here. I want to use auto contrast because we have some uh, confusing lighting in here. So auto contrast helps you to control the shadows and highlights automatically. So I'm going to click on the auto contrast in here. I'm going to move my visual setting in this place. Now I'm going to click on the atmosphere, increase the artificial light brightness. Some number about, for example, 154 is good. Shadow sharpness, we have some interior rendering, so it's not really important at all. You can change it to some soft shadows, for example, 26. Ambient brightness is the uh, management of the interior lighting with the daylight. So we have night light, so it's not really important. You can adjust it with some number about 46. Night sky brightness is about 100. I'm going to increase it to the 144. And the sky is not really important at all. So I'm going to come back to the main bar. I'm going to increase the exposure to some number about 66. And I'm going to click on the uh, image bar in here i need some warm render so i can reduce the color temperature with some number about 5800 kelvina i need a little bit saturation so i'm gonna increase it about two percent 102 percent we don't create any type of animation so motion blur is zero and lens flare if you look at this screen in here we have some flares about these lights on our camera when I decrease the bloom option, these flares will be disabled for me. And if you want some flares on your screen, you can increase it. But I don't suggest to you this reason, because bloom works in some artistic renders. So I'm going to change it to the 0 and lens flare to the 22. Vignate is about 20 and chromatic abbreviation is about 0. So now I'm going to increase my rendering quality to the ultra. It takes a little bit time, don't worry. Sometimes your system maybe for a second will be crash, but all of them is normal. So I'm gonna click on the uh, visual setting. I'm gonna press F on my keyboard and I'm gonna select interior number one in here. My camera set for me again and it calculates all of the lightings from the SR. So, I'm going to reduce the uh, exposure about some number about 61. Now it's much better. And time for the uh, focusing. For the focusing, you need depth of field. I talk about it many times about what is the depth of field. So I increase it a little bit. As you can see, we have some blur screen in here. I'm going to use the focal point for changing my focus point on this women's in here. And I'm going to adjust it by my hand manually, about 5.66, and depth of field. Now we are focusing this place. When I increase the depth of field, all the environment will be get blur, and my main object will be get much sharper. So you must control this number because it's really important in your realistic renderings. I'm going to convert it to the 13 and everything is done right now for me image bar is check atmosphere is check and i think nothing we have in here i can change the density of the clouds it helps you in your gi or global illumination calculation 
So I'm going to type 0 for my controls and press enter on my keyboard. I'm going to click on the output in here and change the resolution to the custom resolution. I need some quad HD render. So this resolution is the best for it. I'm going to click on the main bar in here, close it and close it. So only we have some little tips about the textures. For this reason, you can minimize your screen in here. Click on the material editor in the Enscape, brick for number one. I want to reduce the displacement to the one. Everything is good right now. So my floor reflection is good. If I convert it to the zero, I will have some these reflections on my floor. I want to add it to the zero because I want to see all of the details in the environment. Very simple and easy. So uh, only I have some problem with these lights in here. If I want to tell the truth, so I'm going to click on the uh, Enscape object in here. Click on the click on it, select it, Enscape object, and I want to reduce it a little bit, some number about six. All right, what is the difference? If you focus on this place in the video, you can see the glass formation is much visible for us and we want these type of renders to see the objects details and lights too i want to increase the light source radius with some small range of number some number about six centimeter and another time i'm going to click on the interior number one and maximize my screen so i'm going to click on the uh, visual setting in here everything is done for me image bar but I can make this render much warmer. So I can decrease the color temperature. And as you can see, we have some yellow or green colors on our screen. But green is the, not warm color. I, I mean the RGB codes of the warm colors. So 4000 Kelvina is really good for us. And atmosphere check. Everything is in here done for us. So time for the rendering. I'm going to press shift plus F11 on my keyboard and I'm going to select desktop and type interior render and press save. It takes a little bit time and it depends on your GPU and graphic cards. If you use some type of RTX graphic cards, you will have easy job. But I took this render with NVIDIA GTX 916 two gigabytes overclock and I really uh, have a good feeling about this product so as you can see this render will be done for us and the furniture is really important in your interior architecture so select all of your furnitures and assets very carefully I hope you enjoy this video guys at the end after a second I will show you the main render of this project so 90 and 100 percent is done for us so now i'm gonna click on it open it and this is the result we have in here i hope you like this video please subscribe our youtube channel thanks for your watching and goodbye